Right. Mulloway. Where do we start? Um, this spot here is where I caught my first one. Took me quite a while. Um, yeah, I had several attempts. Um, I actually sort of spent a good three or four nights up that way. And um, trekked along the beach there, which you can see, to that um, end of the break wall. And I used like a traditional surf caster with like a run and rig for a, uh, we're using uh, a, like a squid, a whole squid for bait. And I flicked it out off the end there. Within five minutes, one had grabbed it. And, um, but it took me several goes before that. Um, so we'll sort of explain a bit about how I sort of learned to get my first one. It's a lot harder than you think. Um, and you can get them off the rocks. This gentleman here's got a life jacket on, that's a good idea. Um, he's fishing with a mate as well, that's a good idea. Uh, rocks are very slippery, they look slippery. Looks like the, the sea sort of washes over that a bit, that's looks a bit precarious. But um, yeah, very deep there, you can get them like that. Get them off beaches. Long windswept sort of beaches. Find the gutter. And um, this um, chap looks like he's got one on. Um, and I don't think casting the main, as long as you're in the gutter, it's, 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 the, it's the main thing. You can get them on lures. Lots of different lures you can buy. Um, these are particularly probably quite good, I would imagine. They don't dive too deep, so they sort of snag up. But they dive down enough. Um, especially if you were fishing off a break wall or something like that. These would be really good, I would say. Um, I do like the hard lures. Um, these are uh, Berkeley sort of power shads. These are about five or six inches. I've actually hooked them all the way on, on the, those lures on a similar rig to this thing here. Um, a bit like a Carolina rig. Where you just you gently let it sort of drop to the bottom and let the paddle tail work and let it sway in the tide. Um, and just keep casting and retrieving it over sort of good times in the tide, um, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and there's some other variations here. Don't for Christ's sake put the Z-Man lure in with the Berkeley lure, because they, they sort of melt. They sort of, um, they sort of chemical reaction, they sort of melt. But yeah, you can, you know, these are pretty good as well for that sort of thing. This is my favorite bait, and I think the easiest to, to get hold of and an easiest way to present a bait to catch them on the way is with a hold squid, a large hold squid, Lund's squid, absolute superb bait. They're not that expensive, super fresh, blast frozen on the boats, and yeah, just put it on the bottom and um, night time, something like that. And squid, sorry, Mulloway are absolutely so fond of a squid. That's not even funny. Um, this next bait here is a mullet, uh, very oily sort of fish. You can fish that straight on the bottom as well. That's um, that's a handy sort of bait. You can get some live ones even better and put them in a pad and pull. They're even better, but that's a lot of extra work. I find just getting a box of squid is the easiest thing. These are ballyhoos, or you call them New Zealand piper or garfish, very oily. They're quite good rigged up on gang nail hooks and um, surely retrieve. But again, that's a lot of, a lot of work. Some people use tailor. Um, they chop up into like cutlets or use the head to tempt a big mulloway. I will say about mulloway, I feel with dead baits that you, you're generally going to get a bigger fish um, on a dead bait um, and a you know, live bait as well. Um, I think lures generally you get slightly smaller fish. Um, these are slimy mackerel <coughs> again, um, good quality baits just drifted down. Um, even on a bobby cork, just down the length of a break wall if you've got a boat. This is what, this is like a typical two hook rig. This has got some grapnel wires in it. And that's just a bit of um, mullet. And that just chucked into the surf is a good effective bait. Note the two hooks there and the grip grip wires. This is a live bait mullet. Uh, mullet. And he looks like he's just got the ball sink and just coming back to the tail of the fish. Looks like this fish is just going to be on the bottom, rolling around in the tide. Not sort of swimming around too much, but just being alive and giving off those vibrations. Um, again, it's, if the fish are there, that's the main the main thing. It doesn't really matter what your technique you use, it's, it's finding the fish. And beach worms as well. You can use beach worms, collect them, and um, buy them. Um, and um, they'll take those, readily take those as well. 
Uh, so this is this is like a typical sort of Australian beach scenario. You've got you know you've got sort of gutter there, and you've got some big breakers out there, and you know these big mulloway they roam up and down, and um, you just got to be there at the right time. That's as simple as that. This is a typical surf casting rig. I um, <coughs> yeah, I don't know if I agree with all of it, but. I generally fish the same sort of way. Two hooks, maybe slightly smaller, uh, maybe sort of um, downgrade the mono a little bit. And there's a lot of an abrasion link here, which I generally wouldn't use. I generally use, I think I use 55 pound trace and 30 pound main line with mine. Uh, but this is another similar sort of rig. I, I'm not sure if you need to use as big a hooks as that. It depends how big bait you're using and what sort of you know size you're going for. But this is a typical sort of diagram illustrating the gutter and you're looking to, to, to try and get it in there. Um, I have fished off the beach from Mulloway with not with a lot of success, but I, I, I managed to bump into my fish on a break wall. Um, and I would say my fish was very similar size to this one. Um, and I, I literally, I, did, I landed it off the beach in the end, but I just had to sort of carefully sort of get it around the rocks off the break wall. But, um, yeah, it was a good tussle. It took took line and got in, got in the uh, the river current as well. Now this this Mulloway here is that's a real huge one. Um, that's um, yeah, that's the sort of would take a long time getting. I, re I reckon that. Um, and also you got to look at whether you're fishing on your own or you've got some help. You know, because it's easier to, to land these fish if you've got some help and safer as well. I unfortunately didn't, and that was a little bit dicey. But you know, we sort of used our experience in the end. Um, this thing here is a, like a sort of a, uh, gives the rod a bit of extra height on the on the beach there, and this is a real good one. He's caught. Cool. Looks like he's got his um, van over in the back there, parked in the dunes. Makes things a lot easier. So you can walk so far. So there's some hooks in its sort of gill bottom there, whether it's got a bit foul hooked or what, I don't know. But yeah, this is um, this one's caught at night. Some people specialise in it with night with sort of vibrate sort of metals. Um, or hard lures, bright sort of colours, pink sort of colours, and they will readily take take your baits in the dark, and even your sort of your paddle tails and things. That vibration, they actively hunt in the dark on lures, so you can fish for them. Around bridges is quite good. Around structures, nice little small one there. One day grown to a monster. But yeah, you can see the the shad there with the little lead head. And um, yeah, you can you can certainly go for them at night. So this one here, you notice has got a um, a very large sort of lure. I think the hard lures are exceptionally good off break walls and things like that because they do give off a lot of vibration. And I think a, a big mile away, he can home in on that. A bike catch is a um, a flathead. It happened to me a few times. Um, apparently, they're quite good eating. But yeah, you can get a bycatch. There's all sorts of things you can run into. I run into sort of um, all sorts of fish. I mean, a trevelli and all sorts. You can you, when you use a paddle tail like that. There's all sorts. Because this is the beach worm. I mean, this rig here in particular is like more for like a like a bream or something like that. I say it looks a bit small, but if there was a, a medium size, small sort of mile away about, you'd, you'd, you'd happily grab that one like this. As you can see, he's um, got a Mr. Twister lure there with a lead head. Little light outfit. Look. The 1000 size reel on the braid, nice way of doing it, just in your estuaries and the places like that. There's lots of different places you can fish for them. Out at sea on the reefs, break walls, surf beaches, estuaries, rivers, brackish water, all that sort of stuff. And one thing you do notice about the model, they have this very orange sort of mouth inside and these teeth here. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you probably want to use. 80 pound if you if you're dead baiting you put a live bait you probably use at least 80 pound mono I would say to be on the safe side now this gentleman here has caught one off the rocks he's got a tiny little spin rod there so if he's landed on that that's an absolute probably a record I'd imagine um, but he would certainly need some assistance trying to land a fish like that or, you know so these some some here I think this is South Africa this this photograph here um, and they've all got a mile away um, I'm sure one or two of them could have been released, but there you go. Um, not sure if they're locals or holiday makers or what, but there's some nice fish there. Um, 
croakers they're called, and they make a funny noise. I found with mine, it sort of was croaking at me. But I, I released mine. I didn't, I didn't kill mine. I reckon mine was probably worth, weighed about 15 kg, something like that. Easily as big as one of those, easily. Um, and here we go. These are the break walls, typical sort of break walls where you can get them just casting out to the, to the on the inside or the outside. But I was always told at the end of the break walls it's quite good. Um, there's always a lot of sharks and things off there as well. Um, South Africa and Australia. So yeah, these are sort of the typical sort of places at the end of break walls. I found an hour before, an hour and a half after low tide was particularly good. Um, I tried at high water, that's meant to be a good time as well, but it didn't work out for me. But low water, I saw the change of tide is when I got mine, my two takes. Um, yeah, I, 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 quite a hard fish to catch, a, de a decent sized one anyway. Um, and if you're busy at work, it's, just, it's having the time to do things, you see. Um, I, I find if you're just doing the basics well, is um, you know, you know, having the time just increases increases your chances. But yeah, this looks like Newcastle, New South Wales. Um, yeah, you won't want to fish off those rocks there, those boulders in a real big swell. But yeah, a, a places like that would be good. This guy here using a centre pin, look, something I've never used. Not off a, not off the rocks. Anyway, I've used like, the centre pin off a boat years ago, but he's using sort of that sort of technique. It looks like it's quite an old photograph, but yeah, he's he's on a break all day. I haven't eaten mole away. I don't actually know what they taste like. Um, I've heard they're really good. Um, the big Mulloway, I'm not sure that they're going to be that tasty. I may be completely wrong. But if I was going to eat one, I'd probably want to eat a small one. But there you go. They, um, they do rant and rave about them. Bit of lemon there as well. Yeah, so this is a nice photograph of a sort of a smaller sort of Mulloway. And um, yeah, that's, that's it. Those are the, the, my tips on how, how to catch a Mulloway. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe.